Hello, today I am at the Lake of Monteith and behind me you can see the island of Inchmahome which some of you might know as the um, fairy capital in my book The Spellbinding Secret of Avery Buckle. Avery and Lo arrive at Inchmahome just in time for the autumn feast. Here's a bit from the book. They walked up the jetty and were soon completely surrounded by a wood. The last of the season's leaves clung to bare branches shimmering copper and gold in the autumn sunlight. Huge balls, wavering from twigs and reeds, were strung from the trees. Each had a brightly coloured door and curtain window, with rope ladders and bridges creating pathways between them. Avery lifted her nose and sniffed the air. It was heavy with spices and the smells of cooking. Long wooden tables had been laid out, sagging under the weight of a great feast. Lowe's eyes were like saucers. Everywhere, fairy folk thronged, laughing and chatting, a band of musicians played a wild and chaotic tune on bizarrely coiled brass instruments that had Avery's toe tapping, however reluctantly. A group of fairies wearing costumes covered in bells danced an intricate jig, while others standing around them clapped out the rhythm. Gilly and the other returning riders were greeted with hugs and cheers, while Avery and Lowe were plied with wooden platters laden with spice breads, fruit nuts and sugared cakes. I really wanted to be able to take you out and show you round the island today um, but sadly the boat trips aren't happening and the island is closed to visitors at the moment because of, you guessed it, Covid. Inchmahome is a real place, though sadly not actually a fairy capital. It's an island in the middle of a loch called the Lake of Monteith. In the past monks built a monastery here and you can visit the ruined priory amongst the trees. Mary, Queen of Scots, was also kept safe here during the rough wooing when the English were trying to force her to marry Edward VI. It's an enchanting place with a real fairy-like feel. But the history of Inchmahome Island goes back much further than Mary or the monks. The island of Inchmahome is a man-made island built in Neolithic times when the ancient people of Britain built houses on stilts into lochs and inlets. The name for these houses was a cranog, which is a name some of you may recognise. I visited the Cranog Centre at Loch Tay to find out more. So really sadly, the Cranog here at Loch Tay um, burnt down this summer, that's June 2021. Um, they're currently fundraising to build a new Cranog and actually there's going to be a whole new Cranog Centre across the other side of the loch. Um, so I'll post a link at the end of the video clip and if you want to donate some money um, to the cause then you can do. Large families would have lived in these houses, trading with each other across the water. Over time, the stilts would have rotted and the people would have used rocks and earth to stabilise new wooden stilts. Over time, this would have created a small island like Inchmahome. These funny islands filled my imagination with ideas of ancient monsters who had once stalked the lands of Scotland, only their remains left crumbling in lochs, trees growing from their backs. But as Avery and Lowe discover, not all the Cranogs are dead. <laughs> 